We are what we eat. So, what are we? Well, we all used to be something called a hunter-gatherer. That time in human prehistory when everyone just wandered around willy-nilly and ate what they killed or plucked from the bushes. Then, like 11,000 years ago, some people in the Middle East gathered some seeds from the ancient ancestor of what we call wheat. They stopped wandering, cleared the land and planted the seeds, and from that point onward, it was porridge and bread all round. A slight oversimplification, but let's run with it. By then, humans had also figured out we can encourage grazing animals to hang around. Useful, because humans can't eat grass. They can, however, eat and milk animals. Nuts, bread and cheese. So far so good. Not a bad platter. Soon, all kinds of crops are popping up all over the world. And over 11 millennia, from trial and error, farmers found that their seeds needed certain things to grow. Water, carbon dioxide, nitrogen. Many were inspired by the ecosystems they were a part of, and developed circular systems to give their plants what they needed. Fast forward to 1913. Fritz Haber figured out how to make synthetic nitrogen fertilizer on an industrial scale, out of thin air and fossil fuels. Then, starting in the 50s, boom, the green revolution. Not green as an eco, far from it, green as in plants are green. This spread synthetic fertilizer, pesticides and large scale monocultures, that's growing lots of one thing, across the world and led to a boom in output. The global production of grain increased by 160% between 1950 and 1984. Pretty sweet, eh? Well, as they say, there's no such thing as a free lunch. Traditional farming got swamped by corporate farms, biodiversity fell, soil eroded, water got polluted, pesticides poisoned people and the biosphere, and the nitrogen cycle, a relationship between plants, animals and soil bacteria, was pushed to breaking point. So what about little old Aotearoa? The arrival of Māori brought crops like kumara and taro, cultivated in localised mārakai, food gardens, incorporated into every settlement. But colonisation brought land theft, large-scale farming, deforestation, wetland draining and up to 70 million sheep. Then, the turn of the knife. Under pressure from banks and the government, Low input sheep and beef farming increasingly converted to intensive dairy, which meant heaps of cows, way too many cows, diverting rivers to irrigate grass, trucking in extra food for those cows. It also meant a huge dependence on agrochemicals. And it's still going on. There are 70% more dairy cows now than in the 90s. And between 1990 and 2015, nitrogen fertilizer use increased a whopping 627%. So much for that long told story that New Zealand is a clean, green, as an eco, wonderland. The most obvious victims in Aotearoa are declining waterways, caused mainly by nitrate runoff, a combination of cow pee and poo and excess synthetic fertilizers. So, if we are what we eat, people now are fossil fuels, milk powder, and cow piss. Despite making up just a tiny blip on the timeline of agricultural history, our modern way of farming has done and continues to do a lot of harm. It can't go on, like literally, even if we wanted it to. Industrial agriculture works, but only for a short time. The land gets exhausted by all this farming on steroids, begging the question, where to next? Regenerative farming. A way of farming that seeks to combine traditional and indigenous farming wisdom and the best of modern science, intent on working with natural systems, nurturing the soil and fostering diversity. The change is already happening. Farmers across Aotearoa, across the world, are embracing this new way, showing us that while farming might be a big part of the problem, it can also be a winning part of the solution. And the people of the future? Well, they'll be a bountiful, biodiverse and harmonious mix, just like their food. Made of plant-based goodness and free of the nasties of the not-so-green revolution. Because we are what we eat.